My name is Adem Osai, and I am a 2021 Echidna Global Scholar. I grew up in Nigeria in the 1980s um, when we were still under military rule and I was raised by parents who taught in the University of Ibadan. So I grew up, grew up on the university campus. Sometime at the age of 13, I lost my dad and life became very challenging financial wise and my mother had to work many jobs to keep us in school. I remember that when I was an undergraduate in my first year studying law at the university, things were very tough. And I, I remember receiving, you know, a, a marriage proposition at the time. And I recall thinking that, you know, exploring or going down this path would be the end of my dreams of pursuing or completing my legal studies and going on to be the great lawyer I wanted to become. Good thing was my mother insisted on, you know, keeping me in school and she continued to invest in that education. Having grown up, I discovered that emergencies and crises in, in the lives of families, you know, um, represent a threat to girls' education, just as it did to mine. Many girls face similar emergencies in their lives, and this is why I got very interested in looking at that concept of how do emergencies affect girls' you know, education journey. Currently, I'm exploring how the Oyo State School on Air intervention um, affected girls in upper secondary school in terms of give, making them able to continue to access qualitative learning experiences that were relevant to their lives during the crisis. While there were very general constraints that both boys and girls faced in the crisis, um, there were very specific gendered constraints that affected girls in terms of being able to access the programs and gain quality of learning from the program. It is interesting that girls lacked control over their time, for instance. Um, girls lacked access to technologies that were specific you know, to the use in that program. It is apparent that the gender blind or gender neutral you know, approach that the education and emergency planners of the state government further exacerbated these this challenges. And given that girls exist in a community, um, the failure of the government to properly leverage parental and community you know, um, responses to engage them properly also affected girls' ability to access these programs. It is interesting that from the findings, I continue to see that um, not only is girls' education fragile in Nigeria in a general sense, but that that education is made even more vulnerable during times of crisis. Crises come in different types, shapes, and forms, um, but I refer specifically to the most recent one being the global you know, COVID-19 pandemic. One of the things that we can learn from this is that um, crisis in itself is a constant. Um, the nature of the crisis may change and it may require us to bring in different kinds of experts, but the fact that our lives will experience setbacks, disruptions, is a constant. And so um, the learning and the lesson from this is that it is time for us to develop permanent systems for dealing with crisis. In doing so, it is critical that we place girls at the center of these systems in designing interventions, programs, policies that you know try to make sure that learning opportunities reach girls in immense agencies, the voices of girls are critical for these, these interventions and responses. Another key lesson out of this is recognizing that um, we must shift the focus from mere program delivery to focusing on actual learning outcomes. A lot of the times our knee-jerk response is to make sure that there's an alternative learning structure that is put in place if, you know, traditional schooling is disrupted, but that is insufficient. And so equal focus and energy and attention must be channeled to making sure that in deriving these programs, girls are recording real learning outcomes out of these programs. Girls exist in communities all over the world. Girls do not exist in isolation. Um, they exist in communities of loved ones and of gatekeepers. And so in designing interventions, it is critical that we engage these communities, that we continue to engage these communities for parental support, parental involvement in these responses. This will ensure that not only are girls able to access these programs and interventions during times of emergencies, but that such programs are able to reach the most vulnerable girls in a crisis. Failure to incorporate gender responsive approaches within education in emergency planning comes at a very high cost to everyone involved, not only the policymakers, but all the stakeholders. It comes at a high cost to individuals, to communities, and to nations, and most especially to girls.